Welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, so last week we talked about the Kubernetes uh, security and and why we need to uh, like you know learn about the Kubernetes and why we need to focus on the security aspect of it. Uh, this week we'll uh, dig deeper and see what are the attack vectors or the threat vectors we have for each of the component because it's very much essential to understand what are the possible attacks on each of this component before we actually dig in and like you know start exploring or exploiting or figure out the vulnerabilities so uh, if you don't have this architecture ready uh, take a screenshot and, and uh, like there are plenty of them available on the internet and also on the kubernetes website but yeah just keep it aside while we are going through this so you can see each of these components and and what we are talking about in, in terms of the attack vectors and if you haven't uh, thumbs up uh, hit the like button yet please hit the thumbs up button and if you have any questions at the end leave out the comments so like let's dig in so first off we're gonna talk about the master nodes so uh, i'm gonna talk about this master node first so uh, cluster store controller scheduler api server and then we'll we'll go to the kubelet and then uh, of course the node and port pods so um, master nodes what are these uh, these are like a bare metal or virtual host and and when I say virtual host, you can imagine things like virtual machines, which have uh, which has several ports and services running. So of course, uh, if if the server is not really hardened, uh, the ports and services are not uh, secured, then uh, definitely it could cause a concern and it could uh, invite an attackers to exploit uh, the machine itself. So this is one of the possibilities. So uh, all of these checklist or items we're gonna discuss today you need to keep in mind when you are doing the uh, security assessment for the kubernetes or you're advising client or, or a team on how to set up the kubernetes cluster uh, yeah and of course this could also lead to a privilege escalation and, and compromise of the other host uh, we'll talk more about that on in the in the later slides uh, the second we have is the key value store. Uh, so within the master node, uh, we have, I would ideally prefer uh, that you set up the key value store on a separate node. Uh, it, it contains, as we discussed last time, it contains uh, uh, like, you know, labels and tags for each of our component. Uh, but what if, let's say, what if this node is not secured? Uh, so this is something similar to when we do our penetration testing one of the first item we do is we gather info as much information as possible uh, by by recon or like you know doing some google search and, and stuff like that so this will give an attacker uh, highlights on what components we have it's not going to give you any critical information however it might be useful uh, uh, like you know gathering this information and later at attack the application like you know when we when we do the penetration test we try to see like what server they are running what are the like you know uh, dependency scripts they are running maybe jquery bootstrap etc so we gather all this information so same way uh, this could provide a vital information to the attacker who is trying to attack our kubernetes uh, next one uh, we have uh, the api server uh, of course this is uh, quite critical because this is an actual api server with the rest endpoint and we all know uh, what attacks we can one can do with the rest endpoint if it's not secure so of course it has to be authenticated it has to be authorized this endpoint receives uh, the instructions from other machines uh, to set up and schedule nodes right so it 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 sends the request to the scheduler controller etc so uh, this endpoint is very vital uh, like we need to restrict how many ips uh, can actually access this endpoint so like uh, or maybe have a right authentication mechanism in place uh, uh, and then also uh, we need to make sure uh, the tls is in place because uh, you do not want traffic to be unencrypted not because someone can read it of course that's a concern but what if someone can change the traffic intercept man in the middle attack and then uh, change it around while it's going to the scheduler or some other component so uh, it is very uh, so these are the possible threats uh, we have with the api server within the kubernetes uh, control plane uh, so these are the components like scheduler api server and controller uh, so within control plane we have this inter-component communication right uh, scheduler would talk to api server api server will talk to controller etc 
so this communication uh, is within one node uh, however imagine like you know a complex scenario where this node is running in in one of the big enterprise and and this node is sharing uh, the network with the other corp network or something like that and kubernetes being an open source it is possible that someone uh, as an attacker i can install my salt uh, and then control the traffic uh, between these components uh, it is absolutely possible so uh, first off you need to make sure when you are setting up the kubernetes you uh, you have you are downloading from the author authorized source and then also checking the integrity um and make sure like uh, uh like you know, it's not it's not integrity it has not been messed up by the attackers and then uh, i make sure all, all the master node especially uh, is hardened as we talked before uh, it's it's getting the frequent upgrades as as like you know uh, like a patching schedule it has uh, you rotate the credentials uh, frequently uh, for authentication and then uh, have the like even though these are inter process communication uh, i don't recommend to have a non encrypted uh, traffic it should always be encrypted uh, with the tls uh next is kubelet uh i think last time we talked about this is being one of the most critical component in the kubernetes because it pretty much communicate it allows communication between the worker nodes and the master node right so uh, communication for uh, like you know the traffic coming in and out of the kubelet is very critical so again going back to the same concept we need a tls cert and uh, with the strong ciphers uh, on on each of the node where the kubelet is running so make sure you have that in place as well so these are the checklists like you know uh, i'm i'm giving you right now when you are doing the uh, penetration test uh, of the app or or infrastructure who is running the kubernetes so make sure you you convert this into a checklist or uh, uh, like you know enhance on it uh, as you may like uh, next thing is container uh, so in the worker nodes we have containers like a docker uh, it's one of the most popular but yeah it could be any other containers as well and docker is essentially running the image uh, like you know from third party uh, so make sure whatever the image is being run it's secure it doesn't have any vulnerabilities it uh, it's uh, like you know up has up to date patches and stuff like that uh, maybe uh, like kubernetes also have some policies configurations will will uh, look into that in the later episodes where you can actually configure and force what kind of images uh, it may run uh so these are the some like you know configuration uh checks you must uh perform in the kubernetes container or the yaml file uh, uh when you when you set up a new version application I, I don't think so we need to talk much about that uh, we have uh, entire playlist on how to what to like you know secure in applications uh, uh everything so like os top 10 and and maybe whole series of attacks we have discussed so yeah pretty much uh, just follow the same standard uh, we need to make sure uh, that when you are looking at the kubernetes holistically you also need to look at the applications which are running within the kubernetes and those are secure as well uh and and escape container this is interesting uh, because the containers uh, running in the kubernetes uh, or the host are sharing the same kernel and uh, the kernel may contain vulnerabilities which allows an attacker uh, to escape to the host right so it is quite possible and the second thing is sometimes uh, these containers are running as a uh, root user uh, which is like not at all uh, like you know list uh, it, it doesn't follow the list privilege if you are running something as a root and somebody is compromising it then uh, they get the root access uh, like like database right uh, that we always recommend uh, to have the list privilege list role list permission for a given uh, given account so yeah so if, if if you notice some of this bad configuration that's a red flag so whenever you are doing this sort of assessment make sure you also look for that uh so yeah this is this is like you know high level threat vectors we have uh for each of the uh nodes and each of the 
components within the Kubernetes. Uh, of course, uh, later in the uh, series, we're gonna chat more about uh, exactly how and what we need to see and what we need to check. But I wanted to give you a high level checklist on, and this this is actually also a good uh, learning for you uh, in the for the interviews. Because as I said, like Kubernetes is very, very popular. It's gonna only gain more popularity. So you must know uh, what to secure in the Kubernetes when you have been asked for. So I uh, hope you like it. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm beaten the weather, so my voice is, might not be much clear, but uh, if you have any questions, please drop down the comments and also uh, have some ideas, please share with the community. I look forward uh, to your comments and uh, I'll see you guys next Monday. Bye.